Welcome to Whip's Word. I'm Whip Villarreal here with the final edition of the Word for the semester. Now, before I get into the main subject for the Word, I would like to address the civil unrest grip in certain parts of our nation. Baltimore, as you know, in recent days, rioting has broken out, leaving part of the city damaged as a result of the death of Freddie Gray, who died while in police custody from a spinal injury. And a late break in detail from the coroner's office has announced that they are considering Gray's death a homicide. Now look, I get why people are outraged, and I think everyone should have a reason to be angry. However, I do not condone the looting or causing the damage to a community in order to raise awareness of grievances from the actions of the government. Everyone knows by now that there are only a few reasons to riot. If your favorite sports team loses a game, if your favorite sports team wins a game, if Joe Paterno gets fired, and last but not least, a pumpkin festival. Look, all I'm going to say is this. If you're going to protest, do it with style like this guy who protested in front of a line of police in full riot gear in Baltimore. Now that was classy, although I think a better song choice from the King of Pop's discography would have been They Don't Care About Us. Moving along, YouTube, it's time for the main subject for the discussion for the word. The 2016 presidential election. Yeah, let's get this party started with Congressional Death Match 2016. So news outlets, assemble! Tell me who's running for the head of state position. Texas Senator uh, Ted Cruz announcing on Twitter overnight that he's now running for president becoming the first major candidate to officially enter the race. And Florida Senator Marco Rubio will formally launch his presidential campaign momentarily. Let's talk about Rand Paul. Time Magazine last year, and we were having this conversation many times, calling him the most interesting man in politics. All right, come on, give me more. Presidential candidates are like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. Hillary Clinton has just announced that, surprise, she's running for president. She's the clear front runner of the candidate to beat. The one that's been waiting a long time for this. So Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders announcing today that he will run for the Democratic nomination. All right, and there it is, the candidates who have officially announced their campaigns. So with that in mind, let's count down the candidates according to their current standings in the polls. Let's start from the bottom. Coming in and dead last is Ted Cruz. Yes, Cruz. He's a Canadian-born Hispanic who supported the initiative to construct the Keystone Pipeline. And similar to the concept of the Keystone Pipeline, Cruz oozed down to Texas from Canada, where he eventually became a senator for the Lone Star State. Cruz is also an evangelical Texan conservative with limited intellect. And when has that ever led us astray? Next is Marco Rubio. He's the politician who showed us his ability to reach for a bottle of water without anyone noticing. And you might be thinking, Marco Rubio? Isn't that the kid that Janet Reno deported back to Cuba way back when? No, he's the junior senator from Florida who wants to bring in some new ways of thinking except for this. You are casting yourself as a candidate of a new generation, but there is an issue where you are very out of step with younger voters, even younger Republican voters, according to a Pew poll, 61% of Republican voters uh, under the age of 30, I believe, support same-sex marriage. On that issue, same-sex marriage, Senator, you're the candidate of yesterday. Well, a couple points. Number one, the, the, that is an issue that will largely be determined at the state levels. The second point I would make is I, don't, I think there are still a significant number of Americans that believe that the definition of marriage should be that of one man and one woman as it has been for, th for thousands of years. There are a lot of and that continues but, they're, but they're a minority and well, uh, it, it, I mean, there's a large minority. In essence, there are still parts mm -hmm. of this country. All right, quit being a nomination hog, Rubio. There are a lot of people who deserve to lose the presidential election, like this guy. So I don't think uh, taxing the wealthy even more than they already are taxed is going to fix income inequality. It's a little more complicated. Smoking pot. Would you want to legalize right. pot like they did in Colorado? or would you let, What's your position? I'm not really promoting legalization, but I am promoting making the penalties much less severe and not putting people in jail for 10, 20, 30 years. Rand Paul, he's the candidate who has some good ideas like reduced drug sentences and allowing ex-felons to vote, but he also has crazy ideas too. He's like a Swiss army knife in that half of the blades are useful and the other half is filled with stupid items like the reusable toothpick. Especially when he says things like this. 
Sorry, I came through the train on Baltimore last night. I'm glad the train didn't stop. On conservative Laura Ingram's talk radio show, he discussed what he sees as the cause of the riots. The breakdown of the family structure, the lack of fathers, the, uh, the lack of sort of a moral code in our society. And this isn't just a racial thing. It goes across racial boundaries. All right, I know it's going to be tough to choose a Republican nominee with that kind of talent. But oddly enough, the top contender for the Republican ticket may be in Jeb Bush. So much like Batman Returns, it will be a sequel that will be a darker interpretation of the versions that came before it. Moving along to the Democrats, the latest to announce their candidacy is Senator Bernie Sanders, the independent senator from Vermont. He's a self-described Democratic Socialist from Vermont who got his political start as the mayor of Burlington, a race he won by just 10 votes. A long shot then, a bigger long shot now. I think we're going to have a surprise for you. The surprise will be that we're going to win this thing. He's an unlikely presidential candidate taking on the biggest frontrunner the Democratic Party has ever seen. Sanders, what can I say about him besides the fact that his hair resembles that of Doc Emmett Brown? The outspoken senator has been in politics for decades and has strongly criticized Wall Street and income inequality. And if he plays his cards right, he might give the top contender for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton, a run for her money. And if you don't know who she is by now, then let me show you who Hillary Clinton is, according to Fox News. I want someone who says what she means and means what she says. I want someone who understands and respects the Judeo-Christian ethic upon which this country was founded. I want someone who cares about us, someone who cares about the American people. Hillary Clinton is not that person. She has long experience, she knows the issues, but at the same time she has tremendous baggage. I mean, do America, American people really want another four or eight years of the Clintons and their weird marriage? I, I think, first of all, the minute they say Benghazi, they lose, lose, they're going to lose a lot of people. Does the word Benghazi ring a bell? A bunch of new questions about Benghazi. 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 Okay, look, Fox, Benghazi isn't Beetlejuice. You just don't say it three times and expect to summon it in the form of the truth as much as I know that you would love to believe that that could happen. So look, this election is going to be expensive and fought to the death. And it may boil down to this. Who are you going to trust to pick up the phone at 3 a.m.? A familiar face? Something different? Or just plain nuts? And until next time, YouTube, this has been Whip's Word.